one. Good morning and thank you for joining us today for the launch of the Caltrans Transportation Equity Index version 1.0, also referred to as the EQI. I'm Carolyn Abrams, Race and Equity Program Manager with the Director's Office of Equity, Sustainability and Tribal Affairs. And I'm joined today by our Caltrans team that helped develop the EQI. Eric Sundquist, Acting Deputy Director of the Director's Office of Equity, Sustainability and Tribal Affairs, and Henry McKay, Senior Transportation Analyst, also with the Director's Office. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank Director Tavares and Secretary Omashakin, who are also with us today. Their leadership and vision for the EQI has been critical in the development of this innovative new tool. We would also not be here today without the input of our partner agencies, community collaborators, and key academic research centers and institutes. Partner input was integral to the development of the EQI, and our team would like to extend our gratitude to those of you who have engaged in this development process over the last few years. And Henry, if you'd like to go ahead and start sharing slides. Wonderful, next slide. So during our launch event today, the EQI development team will provide background on the purpose of the tool and the process for developing it. We'll introduce you to version 1.0 of the tool and we'll talk about next steps. Next slide. But first, let me introduce the Secretary of the California State Transportation Agency, Tokes Omashakin, to share a few words. Thank you, Carolyn. Hopefully everybody can hear me very well. Um, a very good morning, uh, everybody. Pleased to be here with all of you, our, our stakeholders and partners, uh, as we launch uh, this exciting tool. Uh, to the public on today. Uh, before I get to my remarks, I want to start off by thanking the Caltrans team. I want to thank Caltrans Director Tavares uh, and the EQI development team. Uh, you just heard from uh, Carolyn Abrams. Uh, you will hear a little bit more from her uh, and the team. But I also want to thank uh, uh, the Deputy Director for uh, Sustainability at Caltrans, Eric Sunquist, for his leadership and work on this tool. Alex Lentz and Henry McKay as well uh, for all of uh, their work in getting us to today as we launch this tool. So we're here today, this morning, uh, for one reason, the people of California's communities. Now, Governor Newsom, from his inception into office, has challenged us all to help create a true California for all. And while the state's transportation network is essential and an absolute necessity, it should not cause harm to its users and neighboring communities. Yet transportation induced harms are inequitably distributed. Historically, entire generations have been challenged by such harms. Transportation inequities can't be addressed adequately without critical data to help identify priority populations most impacted by California's transportation system. Our teams at Caltrans, CalSTA, the CTC, and more will continue to be innovative in our attempts uh, to attain more equitable outcomes for the people of the state. So I am thrilled today to announce the Equity Index tool. It's been created to to develop, to identify inequities from varied angles, including three important data screens. And the three are, number one, priority populations. Uh, it's focused on household income and federally recognized tribal lands. Number two, tribal burdens, oh, tr excuse me, traffic burdens, uh, measured by traffic proximity, volume, uh, and crash exposure. Uh, and number three, access to destinations, measuring gaps in transit, bicycle, and pedestrian networks. 
Identifying these inequities aims to help better inform project selection, project evaluation, and policy decisions, and also help us better align the transportation system to state environmental and equity goals. The Caltrans team will be working to advance equitable outcomes during project planning, development, and design phases for both the department and partner public agencies. And I'll close with this. Uh, the EQI aligns with what we call our core four priorities. Many of you have heard us talk about this for the last several years. Those core four priorities are equity, climate action, safety, and economic prosperity. The EQI development has been in progress for more than two years, and it's part of CalSTA and Caltrans's equity statements, uh, equity commitments that we've made. It's also an action item in our larger policy document, uh, CAPTI. The EQI relies on both publicly available and internally developed data sets. So to members of, uh, uh, of the public, our partners, uh, including institutions that have uh, helped us with research and provided comments, uh, thank you again for the partnership and in helping us get uh, this critical uh, tool uh, to today uh, as we launch it for transportation in California. To my knowledge, this is a one of a kind tool uh, in transportation from a state DOT. Not aware of any other ones that have developed something like this. So I'm proud of the work uh, that the Caltrans team and again, our partners have done uh, to get us to today. Uh, so with that, I am going to hand things back to Carolyn. I, I think she's going to introduce uh, uh, Director Tavares. Carolyn, thanks for all your work on this. Uh, handing it back to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Secretary Omashakin. I would like to introduce Caltrans Director Tony Tavares to also say a few words. Director Tavares, Mike. Thank Tavares. you, Carolyn. Good morning. Uh, thank you again, Secretary Omashakin, for your unwavering support in the development of this transformative equity tool at Caltrans and for your leadership at the state and national level in the space of equity. I truly appreciate all you're doing for California. So hello everyone, I'm Caltrans Director Tony Tavares, and today Caltrans is launching a data tool that turns one of our core four foundational principles, equity, into real action. The Transportation Equity Index, or EQI, will help us maintain and build a transportation network that benefits all Californians now and into the future. It aligns very well with Governor Newsom's California for All. This tool identifies transportation-based priority populations and will enable Caltrans to better examine equity implications relating to our transportation decisions. Caltrans exists to improve and save lives, and this tool will help us do both. The EQI is one of the many ways Caltrans is working to ensure equity is ingrained in our transportation practices. I want to take an opportunity to thank all of the Caltrans team who have worked to develop this tool, as well as the agencies stakeholders and partners who provided input and countless hours into making this EQI tool a reality. Your involvement has been critical in creating this tool and will be invaluable to us as we move forward. Now I'd like to introduce Eric Sundquist, Caltrans Acting Deputy Director for the Director's Office of Equity, Sustainability and Tribal Affairs Eric will provide some additional details, and he and his team will also be able to answer any questions afterwards. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Director and Secretary Omashakin. Uh, I think I am in turn going to turn this over to Carolyn and Henry and come back in um, a little bit later in the presentation. So Carolyn and Henry, why don't you take it away? Well, thanks, Eric. And thank you, Director Tavares. Again, 
the development of this tool would not have been possible without the leadership and support both from the director and the secretary. So this is a major milestone and I think our team is really excited to have made it to this point. Um, next slide, Henry. So as mentioned by the secretary and the director, the motivation for developing this tool was to operationalize the Caltrans equity statement, which acknowledges that communities of color and underserved communities have experienced fewer benefits and a greater share of burdens associated with our state's transportation system. The development of the EQI was also called for in California's Climate Action Plan for Transportation Infrastructure, often referred to as CAPTI, which was adopted in 2021. And finally, the EQI is also intended to support alignment with and implementation of the Federal Justice 40 initiative and can be used as a complement to other federal tools. Next slide. So the objectives of the EQI are really to identify indicators that account for equity-based outcomes, develop a data-driven definition of transportation-based priority populations, and ultimately evaluate and prioritize plans and projects using this equity lens. And with the launch of this tool, the Caltrans EQI will allow us as a department to increase access to destinations through our state's transportation system, reduce burdens associated with the state's transportation system, and build equity into all facets of planning and project development. So before we dive into the technical aspects of the tool, I wanna provide some background around the development and the process for how we reached this launch today. As it was mentioned earlier, Caltrans began developing the EQI back in 2021. So this has been about three years in the making. And during the early development of the equity index, Caltrans held numerous public and internal discussions, which covered the indicators, thresholds, geographies, and other issues related to the tool. Early engagement around the tool focused on our state agency partners, as well as internal and external advisory groups, MPOs, and RTPAs. During the summer of 2022, the EQI team primarily worked on the technical development of the beta version and tested the outputs to evaluate population coverage and other statistics. Another round of engagement kicked off with an information session conducted in early fall of 2022, where the EQI concept was presented to over 100 key partners, and then feedback was solicited through a survey following that session. And then during the fall of 2022, the beta version of EQI was presented at a California Transportation Commission meeting, and additional meetings were held with other partners, including with disability advocacy groups and Caltrans safety programs to discuss specific aspects of the index. And then the team continued to develop the tool, and in 2023, we conducted additional engagement with our internal and external partners around the beta version. And in doing so, the key piece to engage our partners was to disseminate information about the tool, introduce people to the beta version, and then continue to solicit feedback from our partners on the technical aspects of the tool. And this was done through a series of in-depth information sessions, promoting a public comment period for both internal and external partners, and early engagement with the Interagency Equity Advisory Committee, which supports the work of CalSTA, CTC, and Caltrans. So I will wrap by saying that Caltrans would not be here today without the involvement and input of our multiple partners and our external and internal staff and community advocates. So I wanna thank all of you for your involvement in the development of the EQI. And with that, I will turn it over to Henry to walk you through the tool. Great, thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, so I'm going to talk about EQI version 1.0 um, and give a high level overview of sort of the methodology of the tool, how it works, um, and show the three um, screens. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about the general methodological approach we took when developing EQI version 1.0. Um, while other you know, tools exist um, to analyze equity and transportation equity, um, 
a lot of these tools are, you know, not as granular. Um, and then many of the tools we use in California at this point aren't specifically focused on transportation. And so we really, we really wanted to build something that was focused on transportation and had a really direct nexus to, you know, how we analyze projects and be able to actually build that um, kind of pipeline of developing or identifying transportation burdens, benefits, and then relating that directly to, you know, project outcomes. Um, so that's really what we're trying to do with EQI. Um, so there's a few key points um, on what EQI kind of does differently, um, or, you know, what were the high level considerations that really guided the tools development. Um, so first, EQI provides a very detailed level of analysis, and by detailed, I mean spatially granular. So EQI uses census blocks, whereas a lot of other tools use you know, census block groups or census tracks. Um, and while using census tracks is perfectly fine for a lot of these analyses, um, and a lot of indicators are only measured on that level, especially census data, the transportation issues we were trying to you know, understand around you know, pedestrian access to destinations, traffic exposure, um, things like that really are very granular in nature and can even affect you know, neighborhoods differently depending on where you are. So with that in mind, um, we operationalized everything at the census block level um, to be able to capture that nuance. Um, next, we only really included transportation focused indicators in EQI. Um, you know, there are other tools out there that include a broader set of indicators, but we were really focused on ones that we could, you know, move the needle on with our decision making directly in the department. Um, and then lastly, we, we chose to really focus on things that have geographic significance, um, since this is a spatial tool. Um, so there's lots of other transportation equity issues um, that we care a lot about as a department and want to address, but just aren't as spatial in nature. Um, and so you'll notice that the, the things included in this tool in EQI are, are those spatial issues. Um, and that's not to say that we don't want to address those other issues as well. Um, with this tool, we're just taking a focus on those things that we can represent spatially. Um, so now I'm going to get into what the actual indicators are in EQI version 1.0. Um, as was mentioned before, um, there's sort of three key categories of indicators. Um, first, on the demographic side, we look at household income to identify low-income households um, consistent with the AB 1550 definition used by CARB and other state agencies, um, and look at tribal land status. So if a census block is contained within or intersects a tribal land, um, that's included as well. Um, on the traffic exposure side, we're really looking at where the, the greatest traffic burdens are in the state. And so we're measuring that as truck weighted traffic proximity and volume. Um, so basically a measurement of how close to traffic a given census block is, you know, how much traffic there is there and how much of it is truck traffic. Um, and then looking at crash exposure. So looking at, um, you know, where the greatest concentration of severe fatal crashes are located in the state. Um, yeah, and then lastly, we measure access to destinations, and this is one of, I would say, the newer things with this tool that, you know, isn't um, present in a lot of other tools. Um, and really what this is, is a measurement of transportation benefits. So access to destinations is, you know, the ability to get to the things you need to go to, such as your job, you know, the grocery store, the hospital, um, things like that with transportation. And so we're really measuring where access is good and where it's lacking um, on the multimodal network and identifying those gaps. And so we've operationalized three specific access to destinations indicators that are included in EQI version 1.0, um, including ones that look at transit access, um, bicycle access, and pedestrian access to destinations. So I'll go through these indicators um, in a little bit more detail and explain you know, the thresholds we developed um, for, for our screens. Um, so with the demographic indicators, um, we, we, all, we also refer to this as the demographic overlay, um, which is present in all the other EQI screens. Um, first, we look at household income and we're focused on identifying low income areas. And so for that, we look at, you know, um, census blocks that are at or below 80% of the statewide median household income and or are below the locally defined Department of Housing and Community Development low income threshold or AB 1550. So this is a nice definition um, because it's regionally sensitive. And so you, you'll see a different you know, low income threshold in San Francisco than you would in maybe Siskiyou County, for example. Um, so it, it's a better um, you know, locally sensitive solution. Um, and then we also look at tribal land status. So census blocks that intersect or are contained within a tribal land are also included in the demographic overlay. 
Um, next, on the traffic exposure indicators, um, we measure both traffic proximity and volume and crash exposure. Um, we have a methodology to develop those, but ultimately those values are represented statewide as percentiles. Um, and we screen for census blocks that are at or above the 80th percentile for either of those indicators. Um, so you'll find that there's quite a bit of overlap between them throughout the state. Um, but there are, you know, areas that have high traffic exposure and less crashes or areas that, you know, are uniquely burdened by crashes despite less traffic. Um, and so these indicators both collectively sort of identify the areas of the largest amount of traffic exposure in the state. Um, and we do have underlying data for all these percentiles that we make available um, in the EQI tool and associated spatial data as well, um, which is available for download. And then lastly, on the access to destinations indicators, um, we screen we screen for um, census blocks that are below certain ratios. Um, and I'll unpack what we mean by ratios um, for a sec. So traditionally, the way access to destinations is generally measured in tools like this and other studies is, you know, how many jobs can you get to, for example? Um, but the problem with doing this at a statewide scale for the entire state of California is that, um, you know, access looks really different depending on where you are. If you're in downtown San Francisco or, you know, Redding or other parts of the state. Um, and this is very much a land use consideration. And so, you know, there's just a lot higher of a density of jobs in downtown San Francisco than in elsewhere. And so we really wanted to capture the transportation component of access to destinations. Um, and so we've developed um, ratios for each of these indicators um, that basically isolate the transportation gaps that exist that, um, you know, stand in the way of people being able to access destinations they need to get to. Um, so on the transit side, we're looking at the ratio of transit access to destinations to auto access. Um, and we screen all, all census blocks that are below 0.12. So we're essentially saying that if you can get to less than 12% of the things you can get to driving on public transportation, um, then that block census block um, has poor access to destinations. Um, on the bicycle access um, indicator, we look at the ratio of bicycle access on the low stress network to bicycle access on the high stress network. Um, so we're essentially evalu evaluating where is there gaps in the system that are attributable to, you know, existing facilities that are just unsafe for cyclists um, and that can directly dictate where we go in and um, provide interventions and then lastly on the pedestrian access ratio um, we look at the ratio of just pedestrian access on the existing pedestrian network and we, we compare that to where you could get to within the same amount of time if you could just walk in a straight line so if um, the actual transportation not network was not a consideration um, and what this does is analyzes gaps that are attributable to, you know, barriers in the network. Um, for example, freeways, rivers, um, types of types of barriers that you could um, overcome by by building infrastructure. Um, and so, each of these three ratios kind of identifies a different access to destinations problem for each mode. Um, but together, they're really effective at screening um, where those access to destinations issues and barriers are. Um, and so, for that. For these indicators, if if one of the threshold is met, um, then the block is screened. So I'm going to pull it all together now. Um, we talked about the, the different EQI indicators, um, and, but we look at these indicators in conjunction with the demographic data I mentioned, um, and these come together to form what we call the EQI screens. And so we have three specific screens meant to identify you know different types of transportation equity issues in the state. So firstly, the traffic exposure screen um, is really designed to identify those lower income and tribal areas of the state um, that are also the most burdened by traffic you know, exposure and or crash exposure. Um, secondly, the access to destination screen um, is designed to evaluate lower income and um, tribal parts of the state um, that have poor multimodal access to destinations, but specifically um, that these, these access barriers are directly attributable to the transportation system. So not that there's necessarily an overall lack of jobs, but that there's a specific issue with transportation that's um, creating that gap. And then lastly, the transportation-based priority population screen um, is meant to identify lower income and tribal um, land parts of the state that you know, meet those the criteria for both for the um, access to destinations and traffic exposure screens. So the parts of the state that basically receive the highest amount of burden from the transportation system, but receive the least amount of benefit from it, 
um, benefit being access to destinations. So I'll show quick maps um, of each of these screens, but we do have a web map available that I'll preview as well. Um, so you can go check it out and interactively um, you know, look up any community in the state um, on a more granular level. But generally the demographic overlay, which again is that low income status or tribal land status um, is fairly evenly distributed throughout the state um, and covers nearly a half the state's population. So about approximately 45% of the state in terms of population. Um, the, for the traffic exposure screen, um, the coverage drops a lot. So we, it only covers um, approximately 18% of the state's population. Um, and you'll see on this map that that coverage is very focused around, you know, the state highway system, but also in, you know, large metropolitan areas where there's a lot of impact from both the highway system and local arterials and big busy streets as well. And so the tool really captures that cumulative burden of of being close to a lot of different traffic, even if it's, you know, some traffic from the Caltrans system and off system traffic as well. Um, and of course, that also captures where there's high, high crash exposure as well. Um, on the access to destination screen, um, this does capture a higher percentage of the state's population, about 42%. Um, so you'll see that it's, it's very similar to the, the demographic overlay um, and includes a lot of those areas as well. Um, but there are a lot of places, you know, in the state that are that are wealthy or not low income that have poor access, but that's more of a self-selection. So we're really focused at, at identifying those lower income and tribal land parts of the state that have poor multimodal access to destinations, um, because this creates a more immediate transportation equity issue um, in terms of being able to, you know, afford a car to get places, reliance on having a car, um, and you know, poor alternative modes um, in public transportation. Um, bike facilities um, and the pedestrian network. And then lastly, when we bring it all together to the transportation-based priority population screen, um, this screen is the most narrowly focused and only includes about 16% of the state's population. Um, and you can see it's very narrowly focused around identifying where those transportation burdens are the highest in crash exposure and traffic exposure. Um, so you can see, again, it's following the state highway system um, as well as kind of dense, you know, built up environments where there's a lot of um, cumulative burdens from both, you know, highway traffic and local traffic as well. Um, but it's what it's doing is then removing the parts of that screen that are that have high access to destinations. So this is fairly uncommon um, because most parts of the state in this these metrics do have poor access on at least one of those indicators. Um, but you will find places, you know, in the Bay Area, for example, where they have really high traffic burdens, but also really good transportation access. Um, so there's kind of a trade-off there. And this screen, again, is focused at really identifying where those two things converge and the burdens are the highest and the benefits are the least. So now I'm going to turn over um, and preview the EQI web map um, and some other tools we've developed. So I'm going to stop sharing screen for one sec and um, turn it over. to the interactive web map we've developed. Um, so if anyone, if someone on the team, if, if having issues um, viewing the screen, let me know, but it looks like it's sharing. So I'm gonna show two products real quick. Um, first, the EQI version 1.0 web map, and then the story map we developed. Um, so the web map is very simple. Um, on the landing screen here, you just see what the highest level EQI screen of any given census block in the state is. So you'll see we have some transportation-based priority population screens. And of course, that's including those other two, the traffic exposure and access to destination screens. But for census blocks that only meet, you know, one of those other screening criteria, whether it be traffic exposure, access to destinations, those are shown as well, um, as well as the blocks that only met the criteria for the demographic overlay um, and not any of the transportation specific indicators. So you can also go over here um, and toggle on the screens and then look at what the individual screens um, look like on their own as well. So this map is intended to basically show, you know, what the actual EQI screening scenarios are. However, we did also develop a um, story map, and this basically walks through our documentation, our, our technical documentation, and really lays out the methodology behind the EQI, um, as well as some actual interactive maps to show what the um, indicators themselves look like. Um, so, if, for example, if you go to the 
over here to the traffic exposure screen, you can see what the traffic exposure screen itself looks like. Um, so when all those individual criteria are met, um, but then you can actually go in and um, look at what the actual indicator itself looks like, regardless of whether you know a census block was screened or not. Um, and you can do this for all the different indicators for access to destinations as well. I'll map just for a sec that and show that when you It'll pull up a number of indicators here, um, so you can look at like what the median household income is, um, what all those accessibility ratios look like, um, what the screening statuses are. Um, and so we really want to make this a useful tool beyond just the screening criteria. Um, we've developed these screens, but we want we want people to be able to use the underlying data sets as well, um, since you know it is uncommon to find a statewide you know access to destinations data set. And so um, we hope that's useful for folks. Okay, now I'm going to return to the PowerPoint. Okay, so lastly, I'd like to end on discussing a few of the limitations around EQI. Um, you know, we've been developing this tool to really narrowly focus on transportation issues, um, and we received a lot of feedback, you know, both in support of that, but also expressing concern over what the tool isn't able to do. Um, and so with that, we really want to be transparent about what the limitations are in the methodology um, and where we plan to make future improvements, um, as well as kind of, you know, what the known issues are and where you should maybe rely on other tools. So firstly, um, I want to highlight the cumulative burdens issue. So with a with narrow transportation focused, EQI isn't necessarily going to be capturing um, other issues that you'd find in Cal, Cal EnviroScreen, like overall pollution and air quality. EQI looks at traffic exposure as a proxy for those things, and it's specifically as a proxy for you know, air quality issues and noise directly attributable to transportation. So you, know, you could easily find situations in California where ambient air quality in a given community is really bad and transportation would exacerbate that issue. Um, but maybe the, the primary driver of that issue is you know, agricultural operations um, and something that wouldn't be captured in the EQI. So for these types of cumulative burdens, we do definitely encourage use of you know, Cal Screen and other tools as well. Again, EQI is really meant to narrowly identify where those transportation burdens are occurring. Um, but of course, transportation can exacerbate a whole host of other issues um, that aren't necessarily going to be captured in the tool. Um, next, I just want to provide a caveat on those transportation access to destinations indicators. Um, like I mentioned, we're really narrowly focused on the transportation side of access to destinations. So we're looking at those ratios and identifying where transportation infrastructure or lack thereof um, is you know, creating a gap in the network. Um, but what the tool doesn't really do is define where is there poor access to destinations because there's just no destinations. And so, um, for example, you'll find some rural parts of the state where you, know, you can kind of walk to all the immediate destinations available in kind of a, in a small, dense downtown area. Um, and those would screen in this tool with those ratios as having pretty good relative access. Um, however, that doesn't get at the you know, underlying land use issue of, you know, there might not be a critical care facility um, and residents may have to travel really far to get to some essential services. And so the EQI does capture those issues in that, you know, if, if there's new transportation infrastructure um, that would help residents get to those essential services, um, say, you know, a new shuttle service that, you know, public transportation, um, those things will be captured. Um, but the tool does um, not identify specific access issues pertaining to land use where there's just a lack of essential services. Um, we can provide evaluation in terms of if there was land use changes, the tool can look at like how that would, you know, benefit accessibility. Um, but the tool, again, is really focused on that transportation lens. Um, next, uh, there is just a general caveat around indicator selection. So, you know, I've mentioned that the tool only includes spatially significant indicators and things that kind of have that direct nexus to our work. And so with that in mind, there's a lot of, you know, equity issues and transportation equity issues even that um, are best, you know, addressed with other tools or with other analyses just because the indicators aren't included in EQI. Um, so, for example, we've gotten a lot of requests to include additional, you know, Cal Enviro screen type indicators in the tool, like pesticide use and other environmental burdens. Um, and EQI, EQI won't include all those, all those things because we do want to maintain that narrow focus on transportation. So, 
Um, in the case where the equity issues pertain to a specific indicator that's not in, in EQI, we do recommend, you know, in some cases looking at other tools or analyses. Um, and then, you know, frankly, there's also just equity issues, you know, perhaps around like tolling, for example, that are harder to represent spatially um, with tools like this. And so there's always room for other analyses as well. But we hope that the tool can really do a good job of addressing those issues we, we are focusing on. Um, and then lastly, I will highlight sort of future EQ, uh, EQI updates. Um, again, this is version 1.0, and we anticipate there will be a version 2.0, and that will continue. So um, no, we, we anticipate... We anticipate updating the EQI on a somewhat regular basis, um, you know, first and foremost, because the data sets are going to change. Um, so we want to present the most recent version in terms of what the available data is showing, um, but also as better, you know, methodologies become available and better data sets become available, um, we we could be taking these into account. So um, we we'll just stress that um, we will be making future updates um, and iterations to the tool. Um, so. We'll definitely keep folks informed of that as it's occurring. Um, but yeah, with that, that was a high level overview of EQI version 1.0 um, and the techn technical methodology. Um, and next, I'm going to pass it back to our acting De deputy director of Sustain equity, sustainability, and tribal affairs, um, Eric Sunquist, um, to talk about next steps. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Henry and Carolyn. Great job. Um, so. I'm just going to briefly talk about, um, you know, what what this is all going to be used for, and I it's brief because we just had the tool. The tool has just been released, um, so some of that is still in development. Uh, really, all of it is still in development. But broadly speaking, EQI can be used in at least a couple of big ways. One is to look forward as we're prioritizing projects, developing projects, designing projects. Um, will they, will it make conditions better or worse as per EQI, uh, and how much better? Uh, so, um, we are in the process of developing something called the Caltrans system investment strategy, which is a, um, more rigorous data driven approach at prioritizing projects than what we've had in the past. Um, it includes that I, I don't want to get too far out in front of this because it's not finalized yet, but at least the draft version includes a couple of uh, EQI related uh, criteria, one being around traffic impacts, as you heard, traffic impacts um, in these is one of the criteria or one of the screens in EQI. So it directly uh, pulls from that. So a project that would add traffic impacts in a priority population area would um, be uh, would not receive as many points as one that did not, or one that actually relieved traffic in uh, in a priority population area. Um, secondly, it also pulls from the EQI and that um, the accessibility tool that we've been using to measure access to destinations in terms of um, measuring the improvement in access to destinations that a, a proposed project would would provide. Uh, both for the entire population and for disadvantaged communities or priority populations. So those, again, that's still subject to change. Uh, just it's uh, it's uh, we're shooting for a mid-year launch on CSIS. Um, so that may may not be exactly how it works out, but um, that's an example of the forward-looking application. Secondly, there's a backward-looking application. And we're working with our um, transportation, our, our um, asset management group here at Caltrans to really take a look at how not just the spending, but the outcomes or out outputs and outcomes of that spending um, are uh, are distributed around the state. So our our safety and our um, active transportation programs, for just for example, are they um, just going to places where there are um, loud voices or are they going places by some kind of formula that is uh, not doing justice to the disadvantaged communities, we'll be able to tell now. And so they're, they're, that'll take a little bit of a little, little while. This has just come out. 
but um, that is a way to look at uh, our track record and see if we're actually um, investing in the right things in the right places to advance equity, or if we're not, and and likely there will be some area where we're not, we can fix it. But we didn't have that ability to do before, not, not at this level. Um, so next slide. Uh, okay, so I think that I'll just pass this back to Carolyn to um, to talk about uh, an even more detailed version of this briefing. Thanks, Eric. I know our team and our partners are really excited to start exploring additional use cases, so everyone can definitely stay tuned for that. And thank you, Henry, for the detailed presentation on the tool. Um, hopefully that gives folks uh, an idea of what to expect with the EQI. We also encourage you all to check out the web map online, explore it yourselves. And finally, I just want to thank everyone for joining us for today's session. We hope that many of you will join us for our next session, which will be held on Wednesday, March 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. And this will be an even more in-depth technical information session on the EQI. We also welcome your questions both before and during that session. There will be a Q&A period. So uh, you can register online through the EQI webpage, and we'll have that link up um, in a minute. And you can email us your questions at the address listed here. Um, and if you don't email us your questions ahead of time, not a problem. During that session, we'll be taking questions as well. And then we'll be holding some additional information sessions beyond that. Uh, next slide. And finally, I'll just wrap by saying that you can find the EQI web map, which Henry previewed, the story map, which Henry also previewed, and then all of our technical documentation about the tool and other links and resources on our web page, which is listed at that short URL right there. And if you're interested in scheduling a presentation about the EQI for your agency or your organization, please reach out to us um, at our email address listed here. Um, it's also on our EQI web page. And um, for anybody who wasn't able to join or for anyone who wants to revisit this presentation, it was recorded and it will remain available on YouTube. And we will also have that linked on our EQI webpage. So with that, thank you all for attending today's presentation. And thank you again to the EQI development team for getting